Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato. Today's lesson is an analysis of a Charlie Parker solo, or at least part of one, uh, from the tune Thriving from a Riff. This is actually part of my lesson series from the Beato Club. Now, these lessons that I do on there range from a whole host of topics. They're about improvisation, film scoring, music theory, things that are in more detail than I would get typically on one of my videos on the main channel. They also don't have the same production value. They're not as high in production value. Not that my videos are high in production value, but they're much more, these are much more detailed lessons. So this will just give you a feel for, for what it's like. I encourage you to check out the Beato Club. This is lesson 14, Charlie Parker's solo analysis. Hey everybody, on today's episode, we're going to talk about how to do a solo analysis. We're going to work on the Charlie Parker tune, Thriving from a Riff. I'm going to play some of the phrases and then I'm going to show you on the music here how to do an analysis of it. What notes go over what chords. It starts on a B flat major seventh chord. I'm going to play B flat six nine. And it begins on the note D and the first phrase is this. That's the first line. Okay, so that gets us through the basically the first two bars, then they pick up in the third bar. So you have the third, then there's a passing tone up to the fourth, and then up to the fifth. So this is a chromatic line up to the fifth of the B flat, B flat major chord there. So it starts on the third. and it goes to the fifth of the chord. Then we go, jump back down to the third, the fourth, and the fifth again of the B flat major seven chord. Then it goes down to this note D. That is the ninth of the C minor seven chord. And this line here, Da, 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 da. He's still thinking B flat major over here. So it's really like the first two bars. So you get C minor seven, F seven, but this still sounds like B flat. And it sounds like he's result he's actually hitting the F seven there. The C would be the fifth on the F seven chord here, okay? And then there's a little pickup line back into the B flat major that goes like this. Okay, so I went all the way through here, starting on the B flat, and I went. So all of this, there's a B flat major seven sound right there, major seven arpeggio, all the way up to the seventh, but then it leads down chromatically down to F, and you can think of this as an F7 chord, the bebop scale here, right here. So he's kind of ignoring that C minor. He's really thinking F7 for this bar. So you've got this chromatic line that moves down from the major seventh down to the root of the F7 there. Then it goes down to the F sharp, which is a F7 flat nine sound. And then he goes, and he resolves down to the B flat at the on the downbeat of this bar here. Now, what is this note here? This B flat is really, he's thinking B flat seven. Just take the F minor seven out there. This is really B flat seven right there. And he's playing. That's right in the bebop dominant scale again. B flat's dominant scale. That's at B flat. So, and he resolves to the root of the E flat major seven or E flat major chord right there. Right, that's a root. So he's singing B flat seven for this entire bar. So. So from the downbeat of the E flat chord, we have the root there, and you have. And this is all really implying this E diminished sound there, E diminished seven.
There's your E diminished seventh arpeggio. And then it's a very common Charlie Parker phrase, starting in the ninth, ninth to the root, to the major seventh to the root, and then the ending of the phrase ends on a weak beat here. Ba ba do ba da da, and then it goes third fifth. So a lot of chord tones, but he's got the ninth and the downbeat of that B flat uh, chord. So I'm going to play these first seven bars. Three, four. can hear those chord changes happening there, but he's really simplifying the progression here. Let's talk about the next phrase that happens. One, two, ba, ba, da, da. So he starts on the fifth here on a weak beat. One, two, ba, ba, third root, and then up to the root of the C minor seventh chord. Or you could say that this is the fifth of F7. You could say that he's really just implying F7 for the bar. One, two. And then we have this little pickup here that goes through the one, six, two, five part. Two, three, four, rest. Okay, so we have this. He starts on the sus four, but he goes right up to the fifth here. So it's four on a weak beat, all right? You have a non quarter on the weak beat, then fifth, right up to the arpeggio. And then we have this on the G. And that B natural is the third of the G7. So you get the seventh, and then you have this chromatic down to the to the sharp five of the G7 chord. And then this is actually a continuation of this line. So it goes like this. Once again, you're going, it's all leading down to this B flat here, okay? Okay, so that gives you this. Think about it, it's like F, F7 flat 9 sus4. And then here, in this bar, you've got a B flat. He's thinking B flat starts on the third there. So take this off and just put B flat seven. And you have. Um, so third, fifth, flat seven, ninth root to the sharp five. Boo, ba, do, 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 to the sharp five. So I'm going to take it from this bar. Here we go. One, two. Okay, so on this E flat, and it goes down to the E flat here. I think he's still implying E flat major here because you're starting on the B flat, which is the fifth. You're, you're just outlining like an E flat six nine. And right there, here in this bar, he's not playing B flat, he's playing E flat minor six. So he's playing E flat six to E flat minor six. You can hear it right here. And then you hear this resolution back to B flat, the third to the fifth of B flat, three to the five, okay? Next we go to the bridge where it goes to D seven here and he goes. So he's playing the, the starts on the 13th, using that mixed sharp 11 sound. So, so from the 13 to the flat five, to the nine, to the flat seven. And then he goes right up. So this is that, that, that mixed sharp 11 sound with the 13th right there on the D7. And here's going right up a D9 arpeggio, starting on the third, the F sharp. And he ends on the fifth of the G7 chord here. 
right? So always ending on those chord tones. Chord tones on strong beats, not chord tones on weak beats. So here he's playing uh, D minor seven, G seven, and coming right down D minor seven to the third of the G seven. Uh, he's playing a chromatic approach note here. These two notes link in, in direction to this D. Da, 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 da. So he's delaying that resolution because he wants to hit that D, the fifth of the G7 chord, on a strong beat. Even though he's using the third there, but this chromatic passing tone is happening on the weak beat to connect this note. Da, 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 da. And then down to the flat seven. Da, 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 da. Then in this next bar, one, two. So this here is kind of a, um, a pickup line. This is all C mixolydian here, right? So you're, you're, uh, it's a straight up one, two. And this is right out of the bebop dominant scale here. He's going right from the root. And then he's going right up the, th the third, fifth, third, fifth, ninth. Uh, I'm sorry, third, fifth, seventh here. Third, fifth, flat seven of C7. And then on the F7 chord, this is a little tricky here. He's going. And that's giving you this dominant seven flat five sound. Uh, this is really an A flat that he plays on here. It doesn't, uh, I, th I think it's a mistake in the music here. Um, And he's going chromatic approach here, surrounding uh, G flat E, and then going to the fifth third of the B flat. But that's just surrounding that. So this F7 he's implying mix sharp 11, this kind of sound. Then he goes to that sharp nine of the F7 chord. And then he's going surrounding the fifth of the B flat chord and ending on the third for that phrase. This is how you analyze a Charlie Parker tune. It's actually really difficult. This is how you become a great reader and how you learn how to think like he did. And these are really complex lines. They're really ingenious, really, really ingenious. We're going to do more of this in the future, more of these solo analyses, especially of Charlie Parker, because these are, in addition to being uh, challenging note-wise, they're rhythmically challenging as well. Thanks for watching.